Hey guys, it's Silmix Wagon here, and welcome back to another episode of WWW, also known as Who Would Win. This episode, we're going to be putting up the Valiant Universe member, Ninjack, and, we, and we're going to be putting him up against the DC's greatest assassin, Deathstroke. Arguably, DC goes to Sussex with this dead shot as well. But anyway, this is going to be an extremely fair fight, and this is just going to be a random encounter between the two when they get into a fight. I don't know, some. You stole my pet cat or something, I don't know. Something like that. And. <laughs> so this is just going to be a fair fight, simple like that. Uh, no getting up help from anyone, so no help from Bloodshot, or no help from Deadshot, or anyone. I don't know if they want to get help from anyone, they can't get help from anyone. It's just between those two. And with that said, let's get right into this. Starting this off, we have the Assassin Deathstroke. Slade Wilson was 16 years old when he first enlisted in the United States Army. Having lied about his age after serving a stint in Korea, he was later assigned to Camp Washington, where he had been promoted to the rank of Major. In the early 1960s, he met Captain Adeline Kane, who was tasked with training young soldiers in new fighting techniques in anticipation of brewing troubles taking place in Vietnam. Kane was amazed at how quickly Slade was and how quick how skilled Slade was and how quickly he adapted to modern conventions of warfare. She immediately fell in love with him and realized that he was without a doubt the most able bodied combatant she had ever encountered. She offered to privately train Slade in guerrilla warfare. In less than a year, Slade mastered every fighting form presented to him and was soon promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Six months later, Adeline and he were married, and she became pregnant with their first child. The war in Vietnam began to escalate and Slade was shipped overseas. In the war, his unit massacred a village, an event which sickened him. He was also rescued by an SAS member, Wintergreen, to whom he would later return the favour. Chosen for a secret experiment, the army imbued him with enhanced physical powers in an attempt to create meta-human super soldiers for the US military. Deathstroke became a mercenary soon after the experiment, and when he defied orders and rescued his friend Wintergreen, sent on a suicide mission by a commanding officer with a grudge. However, Slade kept his this career secret from his family, even though his wife was an expert military combat instructor. A criminal named the Jackal took his younger son, Joseph Wilson, hostage to force Slade to divulge the name of a client who had hired him as an assassin. Slade refused, claiming it was against his personal honor code. He attacked and killed the kidnappers at the Revendice. Unfortunately, Joseph's throat was slashed by one of the criminals before Slade could prevent it, destroying Joseph's vocal cords and rendering him mute, but he did survive. After taking Joseph to the hospital, his wife Adeline Wilson was enraged at his endangerment of her son and tried to kill Slade by shooting him, but only managed to destroy his right eye. Afterward, his confidence in his physical abilities was such that he made no secret of his impaired vision, marked by his mask, which was a black, featureless half covering his lost eye. Without his mask, Slade wears an eye patch. Deathstroke possesses enhanced strength, strength, speed, agility, and durability, gained by an experimental serum. These include having the strength of 10 men and possessing heightened speed, stamina, endurance, and reflexes. His enhancements made it impos impossible for him to pass, press about a ton. He has the cap capacity to use up to 90% of his brain at any one time, making him a tactical genius adapt it, turning his opponent's own abilities against them. This can also be attributed to his years in the military and combat with various heroes. Deathstroke also possesses a healing factor in his blood that enables him to recover from physical injury much faster than a normal person. However, it does have limitations, as it could not heal his missing eye and cannot regenerate entire limbs. This enables him to recover from what would otherwise be fatal injuries. Through recovery from such injuries render him in, renders him insane and animalistic for a short period. Deathstroke is also a formidable martial artist and hand-to-hand -hand combatant. He proved himself to be one of the best fighters in the United States Army, and through his martial arts training, he would later be a master of boxing, karate, bojitsu, jojitsu, jujitsu, and ninjitsu. In addition, he has demonstrated multi ingualism and been able to speak various languages such as Russian, Japanese, and Korean. Green Arrow, Volume 4, 60, number 66, claims that an assassin known as Natus taught Deathstroke almost everything he knows. A recon of his origin in the new Teen Titans Judas contract, where his future wife, Adeline Kane, trained him where, while he was in the military. Deathstroke is also skilled in the use of various weapons, including swords and firearms, which are among his current 
Weapons of choice. A signature weapon is a power staff that fires lethal and non-lethal energy blasts from both ends. In some realism focused versions of Deathstroke, he staff fires bullets in miniature cannonball like pellets instead of energy blasts. His staff can bend and stretch to include both of these martial arts forms. He has also seen a wide array of swords, seen with a wide array of swords including giant broadswords and katana swords. Typically in combat, he'll use his staff as a last resort. But after his weapons are rendered useless, his body armor is composed of a mesh woven Kevlar chain link mail, capable of stopping small fi arms fire. Most of the metal he wears is Prometheum, the, the volatile variety, which is immune to thanks to his physical prowess. However, in the New 52, he wears a full suit composed of nith metal. This armor allows him to absorb blows from some of the mightiest DC beans, as evidenced by being able to absorb numerous blows from Lobo. But I could not withstand the power of Mazars. When Eric of Dacia returned to Earth with the Exo Manor War armor, the alien vine dispatched their earthly agents in human form called Plant Ins to recover the armor from their falling Visigoth slave. After a failed assault by their own special team, the vine's agents inside the British Intelligence Agency, MI6, hired the weapon specialist known as Ninjak to finally finish the job. Ninjak tra tracked Eric to Peruvian rainforest, where Arik managed to capture Alexander Dorian, the vine planting that led the initial assault to reclaim the armor. Ninjak quickly outsmarted Arik, drug drugging him and stripping him of the armor. Ninjak then took Arik and Alexander captive aboard his jet, planning to turn them over to the MI6, but learning the vine's plans to eradicate all life on Earth, Alexander betrayed his people and freed Arik. Quickly, convincing Ninjak to aid them in their fight and stop the incoming Vine invasion. Together, they executed a full frontal of the assault of the Vine Control Headquarters of MI6 in London. Ninjak and Arik parted as uneasy allies, with Ninjak agreeing to persuade, pursue the remaining Vine sleeper agents with the help from M MI6's Neville Alcott, one of the agency's few remaining uncompromised agents. Ninjak and Arik met once again, soon after the Exo Manor War returned to Earth, this time as the leader of a Visigoth board, newly freed from bondage of the Vine homeworld of Loam. When Arik and his home people then claimed a portion of Romania as the ancestral homeland and began inching the world toward the brink of disaster, Ninjak, under assignment by the secret leader of the Harbrina Foundation Toyo Haradaya, infiltrated Arik's command center during an assume and, and disarmed the Exo Manor War armor. But then the strike team sent by Harada to retrieve it was quickly slaughtered by Eric. Ninjak was taken captive by this, his one-time ally. Ninjak managed to escape and join Harada, the eternal warrior, and live live way in defeating Exo Manor War. Ninjak and the newly formed Unity team quickly realized that the Harada represented an even greater danger, forcing them to retrieve the armor once again and form a strategic alliance with Eric against Harada. Now with the support of the Unity team under his leadership, Ninjak turns to face Dr. Silk, a mysterious figure from his past whose high-tech called Terra Cell webnet plans to unleash a viral epidemic of untold proportions. Colin King is the wealthy son of a master spy who was employed by the British government. King was raised in the Orient, but was an outcast in that society. When his father was killed by a rival agent, Iwatsu, King decided to go into training, determined to continue his father's tradition and bring his killers to justice. Now a master of the secret arts of the ninja, he served England and the world as Ninjak. Ninjak is the enforcer of the mysterious weaponia organization and the world's foremost espionage expert. Ninjak uses his expertise in martial arts, demolition, informing acquisition and other skills, a keen intellect, intellect and the ability to, to prepare people for any outcome in, in, in a given situation. He wears a Kevlar Kevlar armored bodysuit that can change color. And these are some further developments that he's had. Weapon Ear is a worldwide network of operatives through which Ninjak distributes all types of weapons, from swords and handguns to nuclear warheads. He has the facilities and expertise to create customized weapons to the buyer's specifications. These skills generate a large demand for the Weapon Ear services around the world. Dr. Silk, a crippled and disfigured recluse, begins to kill Weapon Ear operatives, believing the Weapon Ear organization is too dangerous. Through his own international terrorist organization called Webnet, Silk virtually wipes out the Weaponier organization. Only Ninjak survives. Eventually, Ninjak joins the British intelligence organization under Neville Oakley, who also works with Bloodshot and Eternal Warrior. 
Alcott has known Colin since he was a boy. Colin's father also worked for Alcott many years ago in Japan. With the weapon year organization destroyed, Colin considers retiring as ninja, but Neville Alcott convinces him to return with something he couldn't resist, his long lost love, the woman, he, the woman he left behind in Japan. Ninjak has no superhuman powers, but has trained his body and is a master of ninjutsu, a group of martial arts that includes jujitsu, hand hand fighting, bojitsu, star fighting, and aijujitsu, drawing the sword. An aspect of ninjutsu is the ability of the shinobi, or master, to use any object as a weapon. Ninjak was a highly anal analytical and tactical mind, and allowed him to foresee various scenarios and prepare for them. He is also is a computer hacker and uses this skill to gather intelligence. Ninjak's greatest asset is his powerful intellect. He is the smartest man in the world. He understands human psychology and is always one step ahead of his opponents. Ninjak can anticipate every possible element in a given situation and prepare a counter for it. Ninjak is also adept at learning and understanding languages, including computer languages. He can learn languages easily and can just fire computer codes and hack into the most complex computer systems. Ninjak has trained his body to the level of an Olympic decathlete. He has mastered a variety of martial arts including karate, jeet kune do, judo, aikido, and several forms of kung fu. Kung fu. Sorry, I don't know why I said that. However, his fighting style of choice is the lethal part of ninjutsu, which was used by ninja warriors of feudal Japan as assassins. Ninjak is also an expert marksman and trained in the use of the world's cutting edge weaponry. He is an expert with a sai, bow staff, swords, and bladed projectiles. Now on to the final verdict. Um, and this was actually quite a tough one because they're both extremely similar. Both very similar in the martial arts techniques and what martial arts they use. And also, also very similar to their powers and abilities. But I'm going to have to go with Deathstroke. And here's why. Even Valiant said that Ninjak is extremely strong character, but he is not nowhere near the likes of Batman, Deathstroke, etc. And that's that pretty much should be just be the winner there. But no, I'm going to do even more things. Uh, Deathstroke can guess what happened before him, but so can um, Ninjak. I mean, they'll be just on basic playing field. I mean, it'll just be like um, just a regular two goons fighting, I guess, but more, much more skilled than that. So they're on the same level with that. But what um, Ninjak doesn't know is that Deathstroke is an extremely skilled fighter and even because of his healing fact is going to give him the upper edge here and say so if Ninjak does do some material here he's going to heal from that and he's going to continue to do that and because of the superhuman reflexes and durability that Death's um, Slade Wilson has it's going to give him the upper hand against Ninjak because Ninjak has nothing similar to that. Deathstroke is probably more skillful in his martial arts, uh, the way he uses them, um, especially how he interprets guns and bow staffs and everything into that, when Ninjak most commonly only uses his sword. Uh, Ninjak does have the higher intelligence over Slade Wilson because he's the smartest man in the world, and Slade definitely certainly isn't, um, but so Ninjak does have that art on him, but Deathstroke would come out victorious, so Ninjak might be able to outsmart him, but Deathstroke though, would then foresee that and then take that out, so... Uh, yeah, hope you guys did like this video. Make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.